from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Ricardo Davis. I am the pastor of a new parish in Markham called Blessed Frederick Ozanam. Uh, so today is September 9th. It's the feast of Blessed Frederick Ozanam. And so that's why I'm dressed in white, and that's the feast that we're celebrating today. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anom anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of her son, Joel Rosales. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, before we begin our celebration, let us pause for a moment of silence, call to mind our sins, and ask for the Lord's pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have taught your church to keep all the heavenly commandments by love of you as God and love of neighbor, grant that practicing the works of charity after the example of blessed Frederick Ozanam, we may be worthy to be numbered among the blessed in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, Christ has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before God, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my help. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. The Lord God is my but surely God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. The Lord God is my help. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, 
the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the feast of Blessed Frederick Ozanam, the founder of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, my name is Father Ricardo Davis. I am the pastor of a new church being built in Markham, Ontario, a church that is named after today's saint, Blessed Frederick. Our parish was established in 2017, and we have the distinction of being the only church in North America, and probably the world, which is named after this modern saint. To be completely honest, and I'm really embarrassed to admit this, but when I first heard that the new church in Markham would be named after Blessed Frederick, I had no idea who he was. And I'd wrongly assumed that the founder of the St. Vincent de Paul Society was St. Vincent de Paul himself. However, after learning more about Blessed Frederick, I realized what a wise choice it was for our former Archbishop, Cardinal Collins, to name the new church after him mainly because the life of Blessed Frederick shows us that the call to holiness, the call to sainthood, is truly universal, that we are all called to be saints, that saints are not only those, those who live consecrated lives, such as monks, nuns, and clergy, but saints can be quote-unquote regular people, people who, like Blessed Frederick, are very much in the world, but not of the world because Frederick Ozanam was basically a regular guy, a guy who was married and had a family, a guy who had a secular but noble profession as a professor and a lawyer, a guy who had other interests apart from religion, and a guy who dealt with the demands and pressures of family life and career, all while trying to remain authentically Christian in a world that was increasingly becoming anti-Christian. And what was also wise about the Cardinal's decision is that Blessed Frederick shows us that sainthood is entirely possible within the context of family life, that one doesn't have to forgo family life or cut themselves off from the world to achieve holiness, that holiness can be achieved by serving the members of one's own family and the members of one's own community, and that family life is, in fact, one of God's chosen means for personal sanctification. In other words, believe it or not, sainthood can be achieved by doing such simple things as changing diapers, as taking out the garbage, as helping your child with their homework, as caring for an elderly parent, as serving breakfast to your spouse in bed, as reaching out to a neighbor who's dealing with a health crisis. These are all things that, when done with the right spirit and with the help of God's grace, can make us into saints. There are three essential qualities that I think Blessed Frederick had, qualities that, in fact, all saints have, and that we are called to pray for, to seek after, and to strive to possess. The first is that saints don't simply love God. Saints are in love with God. For there's a difference between simply loving God and being in love with Him. Because it is only when we are truly in love with God that we are then filled with, their, with zeal for His interest rather than our own interest. 
And it is then when we are in love with God that we are more concerned with what we can do for him rather than what he can do for us. And it is when we are in love with God that we are more invested in pleasing him rather than pleasing ourselves. In other words, when we are in love with God, we are more invested in doing his will rather than our own. And we're more, we're more invested in establishing his kingdom rather than our own kingdom. The second quality all saints have is that saints don't just know things about God, they know God himself, meaning they know him in a way that is deeply personal and intimate. Our faith is so rich with traditions, symbols, and rituals that it's sometimes easy to forget that the heart of our faith is a loving relationship with a person and not a relationship with rules, rituals, and pious devotions as good as these are. But rather, it's a relationship with a very real, sorry, it's a, uh, rather, it's a very real relationship with a very real person, a divine person who we can know as intimately as we know our own parents, our own children, and our own spouse. And this is key to what makes someone a saint, because when we come to know God intimately and personally, when we co come to know him, excuse me, when we come to know him as a real person and not as some lofty idea or mysterious concept, we can't help but fall in love with him. And when we fall in love with him, we can't help but want to please him. The third quality that defines a saint is that a saint truly has the heart of a servant, that like our Lord, they are here to serve, not to be served, to serve, their own, to serve in their own unique situation and their own unique circumstances. Whether they are married or single, poor or rich, healthy or sick, consecrated persons or lay persons, they find ways to serve others simply because they have the heart of a servant. This is why the motto of our new church is the following, with hearts and hands we serve, because this motto reflects how Blessed Frederick lived his life and how we are called to live ours with a heart that truly knows God and not just things about him to the point that we're able to recognize him in others, especially those in need, and with a heart so in love with God that we are willing to serve him in our neighbor, who we may or may not know, but who we are called to love and to serve nonetheless, to serve with concrete, con concrete actions like feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and visiting the sick. Because if our service to others remains only in the heart, and doesn't extend to our hands, then the only one we're really serving is ourselves. These are the things that truly characterize a saint, and these are the things that truly characterize Blessed Frederick Ozanam. And if a quote-unquote regular guy like Blessed Frederick can achieve this degree of holiness, this degree of sanctity, then with God's help and with God's grace, so can all of us. Amen. Now let us offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. As we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those in the Daily TV Mass Prayer Intention Tensions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those suffering from an addiction, for those in recovery, and for those seeking healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those trapped in the evil of modern-day slavery, for all who work to help these people, and for an increase in the number of those willing to get involved to bring an end to human tra trafficking, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or, or spirit, that the Lord may lift their burdens and restore them to the fullness of life and health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our departed loved ones, especially Joel Rosales, that they may dwell in Christ's abundant love for all eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, on this feast of Blessed Frederick Ozanam, we ask you to guide us along the right path, and through his intercession, grant us the grace needed to lead lives which are holy and pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the all of the Holy Church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of blessed Frederick Ozenam, be confirmed in love of you and love of, of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And the mouth of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you are pleased in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors for the race, in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with their blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Frederick Ozenam and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Francis our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now at the Savior's command, <laughs> excuse me. And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of blessed Frederick, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth now in the peace of Christ. The Mass has ended. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.